My name is Farid Nouri and I'm riding 1400 kilometers to welcome the Persian 15th century. Welcome 15th century. My name is Farid Nouri and uh, I'm from Afghanistan. Over the past six days, I embarked on a riding challenge to ride 1400 kilometers for the Persian New Year. And this is my story. I currently live in Fayetteville, Arkansas, attending the uh, graduate MBA program at the University of Arkansas. Uh, I'm about to finish my first year and enter my second year. And I'm a competitive cross country mountain biker also the founder of Mountain Bike Afghanistan, which is a nonprofit that I started three years ago to grow the sport of mountain biking in Afghanistan, which is brand new. And it's really exciting to get it going. I came to the United States 10 years ago and I'm really lucky to have been all over the United States for uh, mainly education and also traveling. I finished my high school in New Mexico um, and I went to college in Vermont. After college, I spent a year and a half uh, living the nomad life, traveling the country, uh, attending cross-country races. After learning about the incredible uh, trail network that the Oz Trails is building here, uh, so this region is increasingly becoming a mountain biking hotspot, and obviously uh, my number of Number one criteria for uh, anywhere I go is, are there good ridings there? So I decided to come here. Nowruz is a Persian word uh, that's taken from two words, now and rose, which means new day in English. And it's basically the name of the new year in Persian. Uh, and it's also coincides with uh, the first day of the spring, which uh, is incredible because, you know, Everything changes, the weather gets warm, and it has the feeling of a uh, refresh start, a new beginning. Uh, you know, it's a universal celebration of uh, new life on the planet. This year, the Persian calendar turned to the year 1400, and the double digits is a new beginning. It's the beginning of a century, and I was uh, really surprised two weeks before the new year that not a lot of people were really hyped up about this. Nobody was doing anything and I was like, I need to do something to get people excited. Like, I want to do a countdown where, uh, you know, I'm doing something super, super interesting and kind of outstanding that it gets people like, oh wow, if he's doing that, we got to do something too. Afghanistan is a young nation. You know, 65% of our population are under 25, and um, there's so much energy that's not really harvested um, because of lack of resources and uh, ch other challenges that we all know about. We've been doing the same things for this, you know, in the same ways for a long time. It's time for new things, and cycling is obviously a new one. I think that it's time for us to really be able to do these things at home. Um, I rode about 1,200 kilometers in northwest Arkansas. If I had done that in Afghanistan, I would be going from the west end of the country all the way to the north where there's a huge no rose celebration every year. And can we do this at home? Like, that's, the, that's what I want from the new century is that we also enjoy our country in very personalized, personalized ways um, without fear. I think that the true crux of this week-long challenge was to have an opportunity to tell the Northwest Arkansas cyclists about Nowruz, a cherished tradition back home. The bike can be so much more than just a pedaling tool. Obviously, it gets you to one, from one place to the other, but it can become a medium for exchanging cultures. Obviously, like right now, we are in a pandemic and I couldn't 
ride with so many people and it was mostly solo, but I was able to, through social media to share this journey with other people. In every place as I've been in the US because of the bike, I've been able to go deeper and deeper into places and cultures uh, that I wouldn't normally be able to do that. This challenge was a wonderful opportunity for me to go out of my immediate radius into uh, other places in Northwest Arkansas and literally explore. I think adventure is what we're living for. I think that for anyone who rides a bike, you don't need a big event to get you out of your comfort zone. You can come up with your own ideas. Big ride, obviously, you can pace yourself. The fatigue accumulates slowly over, over time. And the fact that you have to do it day after day is a mental battle. Uh, just basically you have to get out of bed and forget about pain and get back on the bike. Um, after 20 miles, you kind of start to forget about it. People who love riding bikes know exactly what I'm talking about and I'm stoked. Um, I want them to have fun on their bikes and you know, to do their own adventures. So day one, super excited, got an early start. It was Sunday, the roads were empty and I was so excited. And then I got a flat, fixed that flat, got a second flat. And by this time I've only ridden 10 kilometers maybe. So a <laughs> really poor start. This is Steele, a small town outside of Fayetteville. And I've gotten the second flat Within the first uh, hour of the ride, uh, this is brand new tires. I must have had any some defects. I don't think the roads are terrible. Um, so it's really unfortunate. But right now, uh, I've run out of my spare tube uh, and repair kit. My friend is on his way to pick me up. And the skies look like they're gonna zero in on some thunder. Thankfully, I have a lot of time in the day um, to hopefully um, fix this and continue to ride. So, uh, still not the end of the world, but definitely not how I hoped uh, this journey is going to start. Uh, but that's part of it, right? Um, the adventure, I guess. Yeah, where are you going? Amarillo to San Bernardino, California. No way! Oh, not right today. I'm okay. training for that. That's amazing. When is that? So I'm here with a second flat within the first hour of the ride. I'm riding for the Persian New Year, uh, which turns to the year 1400. And um, it's a last seven days countdown and every day I'm doing 200 kilometers for the Persian New Year. That's uh, uh, about 120 miles a day. 125 miles a day, yeah. yeah. Afghanistan friend, I'm not, uh, I don't think that's where I met anybody's Afghanistan friend. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna go to a bike shop and I'm gonna solve this problem for good because I don't think this tire is good. It's a brand new tire and it's the second flag. But the weather, however, is not looking that great. By two o'clock, 100% thunder is supposed to start. And I am asking all of you friends to pray that the lightning doesn't hit me. It took some time to get a new tire at a bike shop and they obviously open later in the day. Time to fix this for round two. And let's see if it's starting to hook. Wait, something is out driving. What is the universe uh, doing to me? These guys are not open at all on Sunday. So now I gotta go find another solution. We got some blueberry lemon. This is the maple pecan up here on the top right. Actually, could I change mine to maple pecan? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I should probably take my helmet off. Alright, here we go. Then I was caught in a rainstorm 65 miles in, which is about 105 kilometers. 
It was lucky that I was really close to Fayetteville when the rainstorm was really terrible and I just made the good decision to stop, uh, not to risk it. Day two, so big loop that went up to Bentonville, Tawny Town, down to uh, Prairie Groove and up to Fayetteville. Um, good day on the bike, started out really nice, sunny, perfect weather. And I had a terrible headwind for almost 80 miles. It was the second day and I still had a lot of energy in me. I hadn't obviously ridden consecutive days long like this, so I was still like pushing, uh, which was I think a big mistake. I came home exhausted. Like I accomplished the route that day and I met with a friend for dinner and I was telling him, I don't know if I can finish this. Like, this is, I'm like dusted. Day three, I got up and I was like, I need to do a flatter route today. And that's one of the funny things about Fayetteville is that, you know, pe many people think it's flat, but it's actually really hilly. It's hard to find a flat um, route here. My body was really tired from day two. Uh, so I wanted to stick somewhere flat. And the only, uh, the only solution I found to that was sticking to this 28 mile loop that was pretty close to Fayetteville. Hey everyone, it's day three and uh, feeling good. Today the weather is really good and I picked up a flat route and basically doing laps on it to make a lot of progress for lost miles on the um, first day. So stay tuned. The most bizarre thing just happened. Uh, I was riding and the front tube protruded out of the tire. Um, so it just protruded under the tire and just blasted after 45 miles of riding. Your tire, that will never go flat. Well, I'm gonna say never. <laughs> <laughs> These ones though, they might. I already had a flat on the front and I had to change it. Today? Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> How long are you going today? Oh, I'm just doing uh, about 30, 30 miles. Today. Amazing. Well, Neil, remember Persian New Year is on Saturday. It's, a, uh, it's uh, Iran. Iran, Afghanistan, and Tajikistan are the three countries that officially celebrated. People also celebrated in other Central Asian countries. So I'm doing all these ride in uh, celebration for the Persian New Year because the year is turning 1400. Yeah. And my goal is to arrive at 1400 kilometers on the New Year day. So I'm a little behind pace because of the first day mishaps. That's why I'm doing a big day today. Okay. Yeah. Well, have fun. Thank be you. Be careful. So that day I uh, had to suck it in a little bit and not wear the adventure hat. And I just went five times around this 20 at my loop in Fayetteville. Um, and I was able to accomplish 165 miles. Uh, which was really good because it made up for the first day when I could only ride half of my goal. Day four, I got up with swollen eyes and swollen everywhere in my face. And I was like, oh, this is not good. Um, I don't know if this is like the beginning of a cold or if I'm not getting enough sleep or poor sleep. Um, and this is, you know, I'd never challenged myself like this. So I'm taking it, my goal is to take it day by day. Like get up and get on the bike. And if you can survive till the end of that ride, the next morning, like, you know, we'll, we'll think about it. Hey everyone, it's day four. And as you can tell, I woke up with swollen eyes. Um, I did sleep well. Uh, I think that my body immune is uh, definitely hit hard uh, after riding nine hours yesterday, seven hours the day before, and I'm headed to uh, Fayetteville Co-op uh, to get some uh, immune boosters. And it's also raining. Hopefully it should lift up or at least get less rainy at 10.30.
uh, which is where I want to head out. Because the weather was overcast and a chance of a lot, a chance of thunder, I wanted to stay close to home again. So it was another flat day. I started the ride. It was going really well at midway point. I stopped for coffee and right there, like a really terrible thunder started. So I took shelter under Domino's and then went inside to have a really delicious Philly cheesesteak, which I think was meant to happen. Under a Domino's, so of course, I went inside and got Philly cheesesteak. I did not know they made these, but I'm pretty excited for this lunch. Then when I got back on the bike after the rain stopped after half an hour, I was like, great, this passed. But no, it hadn't. It caught me, you know, within half an hour and pretty much the rest of the day it was raining and I just pushed through the rain. I accomplished 130 miles that day. Day five, I got up and remember on day four, my face was fully swollen. I got up, I was so tired that you know, it was feeling really, really challenging to go out and do, knock another 200 kilometers out. And the weather was looking um, really bad. Uh, temperature was about uh, freezing. Um, clouds were overcast. And I decided to just take a rest day and uh, either like finish the challenge a day later or do something else. Day six, I went to Bentonville, border between Oklahoma, Arkansas, a town called Maysville. I think that was one of the most adventurous days. Um, I was able to see change of scenery because when you get close to Oklahoma, it just, it's flat and you can see it. It was also a day that I had headwind in the first 40 miles and then tailwind in the last 80, and that felt incredible. That just made it easy to finish the day not feeling super tired. We go all black today. So, day six. Honestly, this bike needs more work than its current state for such a long day, but my days are consumed by riding, coming home, eat, sleep. So there hasn't been a lot of time, and I know that I have to replace the chain um, because it's getting extended from all the riding, but I think it's gonna hold on. So yeah, I clean and then check if anything is I need to be worried about before going out again. All good. <laughs> Hang in there, tired. Day six, which is day six of riding, but day seven of the challenge, uh, and that was the Persian New Year day. Beautiful sunny day, and Neil was joining me. Hey, Neil. Neil is a friend of a friend and he had heard about my challenge and he wanted to come out and ride. You know, it happened that he could only come on Saturday to ride, uh, which ended up being perfect because I was uh, 400 kilometers short. So by riding another 200, I would still be 200 kilometers short by the end of the day. Um, you know, Neil was like, hey, I'm gonna help you finish this challenge. Like, we're together, we're gonna roll to the finish line with 1400. and. I thought that was incredible because in a way it allowed me to share the uh, challenge and the celebration of No Rose uh, with Neil. The goal was to ride up to Bentonville and then ride all the way down to Lake Fort Smith through the Boston Mountains. So the first half of this ride is flat. The second half is uh, incredibly hilly. We're almost at the halfway point of the final day of the challenge with Neil here. And uh, yeah, we're excited to get out of the flats and get into the Boston Mountains for some climbing and pretty views. So, uh, see you guys there. It was the day with the most character uh, in terms of geography. Like, we saw so many variations. We saw so many people living out there, you know, so much respect. Um, and obviously, we were descending into the No Rose Party which was incredible.
We're, you know, two thirds of the way in. We've ridden 85 miles. We have three big climbs ahead of us through the Boston Mountains. Uh, the last of which is going to go up and then down and then up to um, Lake Fort Smith, which is where a uh, dozen people are hanging out and celebrating now Rose and we're uh, aiming to catch that and uh, join in the celebration. So it's all good. Last day, it's going really well. Are you sad that it's your last day? Yeah, you know, it's been, uh, it feels like a long time <laughs> uh, since I started it, which was, you know, Sunday. And it's amazing how when you're so focused on one thing, just time flies, but it also feels really long sometimes. But I'm actually really happy that I did this. I think that many, many years down the road, I will look back at this and, and really smile. And I think there's, this is the most alone time I've spent. <laughs> eight or nine hours uh, every day on the bike. Is it nice having uh, some company today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Time just flies with company. So uh, it's also good to just be with yourself sometimes and uh, get lost in thoughts. But uh, super nice to have Neil for sure. The best thing was the descend into Lake Fort Smith with Neil. Uh, downhill is going to be pretty fast, so... It had been a long day and the most hilly day because we rode in Boston Mountains. We knew what was waiting. What was waiting was an incredible Afghan feast on the Nowruz New Year Day. What was waiting was Neil's family, his children. What was waiting was my friends and springtime. And we were at the end of it and it was just, man, like flying down that descend on um, Lake Fort Smith, home run. It had all of those feelings in one. And yeah, that was, that was probably the highlight of the ride.